When working on projects, we always try to focus on two aspects, a more theoretical or explanatory and a more practical or more experimental one. In this project, about light, the activities of this experiential aspect were clearly dominant. And that is basically because from the beginning we did not want to offer a project that would make children dizzy with a lot of theoretical concepts on this topic that also are not very easy to explain to five-year-old children. And instead, it is a topic that opened infinite practical possibilities. We could design many empirical, hands-on activities, very attractive to children, and so it has been. The first understanding goal of the project is for children to understand the concept of light. To do this, we started the project with a very experiential immersion stage, where we covered the children's eyes with scars, so that they could experience how they felt, what kind of sensation was generated when being without light, if it is pleasant sensation or unpleasant, they were expressing their opinions about these feelings and later they removed their scars and realized that the class was in dark and that they were still unable to see anything. And then at that moment it was when they realized that to see they not only need the sense of sight but they realized the importance of light. Here we started a more reflective part where they showed their previous knowledge about light and we went through a phase of classification between natural light and artificial light so that they could also practice their skills to later develop thinking skills. Then we went to a much more hands-on and more experimental stage where we prepared the two classrooms with different activities and they had to try experimenting, manipulating freely, playing with diverse materials such as translucent fabric, gelatin, cellophane paper, combined with different light sources. We had torches, lava lamps, a light table, an ultraviolet light, and they were freely combining, trying, experimenting and testing the concept of light. The second objective that we talked about was having the students experiment the effects that the light had upon different types of materials. And for this we created shadow and different lighting activities and the very first one that we developed was the puppet show. They were able to create their own construction paper figures and using the light and the curtain they were able to manipulate their own shapes creating themselves their own story. So we wanted the children to be able to create their own figure and we wanted them to cooperate together in small groups and talk about discussing ideas for them to create their own show for the others. The second activity that we developed was the shadow tracing. And in order to do this activity, we wanted to incorporate uh, natural sunlight. So we, went, we took the kids outside and we had them uh, get an object of their choice. And we talked about the sunlight effect on the objects depending on the time of the day. So it was kind of a trial and error uh, experiment. And some of the kids came up with observations such as, oh, the sun is moving from east to west, or when I'm on this side of the school, then my shadow is thicker. Is it shorter depending on the movement of the sun around the day? And the last activity we had the children work with was the UV light. And for this activity, we provided different neon color paints and for them to wear their own white t-shirt. At first, everything was dark, so the students didn't really know what the light was gonna come up like. And when we turned on the light, they began to see that their t-shirts light up, and then they saw how the UV light affected the color of the paint to light up and brighten the saturation and give it like a special effect. And they were able to create 
um, their own pictures using their fingers and then they would wipe them up in each other's t-shirts. The third understanding goal was for the children to know what is a transparent material, a translucent material and an opaque material. Because these concepts, perhaps intuitively, children know transparent and opaque, but we wanted to fix these three concepts well. So we started the activity with a conversation with the children to see what types of materials with these characteristics they knew from the classroom. Next, we gave the children cellophane, tissue paper and cardboard to experiment with. And you could see them like this looking against the light and what they saw, what they did not see. And we ended the activity with a hands-on composition with the three types of paper. We try to make sure that in every project we get parental involvement and in this project it was fundamental that some parents came in to help us out with some of the complex concepts about light and we had our parent expert panel come in. We had two parents uh, at first who came to explain the other concepts of light such as refraction, um, absorption and reflection. For reflection and refraction, um, the parents came in with different straws and we tested them in water cups we had a, a coin in water and, you know, depending on the distance from afar or from near, they were able to whether see the coin or not. And for the other uh, workshop for absorption and light decomposition, the parent came in and told us about color mixture, about lead light coating, and the addition of the different colors that came up to white as for light. One of the activities we would like to mention is a lecture called A Life Without Light. And we would like to highlight it because of the emotional learning aspect, something that we are trying to develop especially this year in our school. A relative of a child of the class who is blind came to visit us. How can you help a blind person? Talking to us, because we do not see but we do hear. And then. No, you should not take us. You have to ask, do you want me to help you? It was very exciting to see how the children welcomed this activity, how they reacted to it, because Marta, which is the name of the woman who visited us, came with her guide dog. She also came with a few canes, those which are used by the blind, and she knew how to explain to the children the best way to help the blind. For example, the children practiced with the sticks, they could also try to put themselves into the shoes of a blind person. She also spoke to us, for example, and this was very interesting about the braille language and how it facilitates the lives of people who do not see, those who have no light in their lives. Also how new technologies are helping a lot in the practical life of these people mobile phones that have applications that tell them how to go to a place. And it was very interesting, as I said, the reaction of the children, what the children were curious about and how the dog knows where to go and how it tells people. This was all a lesson for the children. All the activities that were offered at the same time were designed to take into account multiple intelligences. We worked on linguistic intelligence in the most reflective part of the session or when they manipulated breadcrumbs with a mixture of lights. There they also practiced the stroke. They practiced writing and visual intelligence when they were making their paintings with ultraviolet light. There was a more intrapersonal part where they were aware of their own emotions being without light and at that moment when we covered their eyes they also used visual spatial intelligence. Finally, of course, the interpersonal intelligence when they related to each other sharing ideas and playing cooperatively. Cooperativa.